Welcome, Lakers. This is Spencer Emerson. I am from the Department of Recreation and Wellness. Welcome to this week edition, which is June 8th, Monday matinee. I am joined by... My name is Daryl, as always. I am the... Uh, as always, my name is always Daryl. Sometimes it's not Daryl, it but today it's Daryl. Uh, yeah. No, my name is Daryl, and I am the Outdoor Adventure Coordinator for the Department of Rec and Wellness. Um, and this week's movie that we're going to be talking about is Cool Runnings. Cool Runnings. I love so, it. It's the coolest. Uh, Spencer, do you have the uh, the description pulled up there? I do have the description pulled up. Give me one second, actually, because I had it pulled up, and then I left my cell phone next ah! to So I have it. It's you're a like, pretty easy you're one. You're like a black hole. <laughs> I know it was it was just a disappearing so I do apologize for that point. The good part is this isn't a you know TV produced show so it you know we we're allowed to have our our mix and everything like that so it's it's my fault but we'll get started on it right away. So this film was made in two, uh, 2000. Wow. Nope. That's just what I'm not even exactly. close to it. <laughs> so this movie was in 1993. Okay, four Jamaican bobsledders dream of competing in the Winter Olympics. You heard that four Jamaican bobsledders are trying to compete in the Winter Olympics, despite never have never have ever seen snow. Oh my gosh, I can't do this today. I'm trying my best so, with the help <laughs> with the help of a disgraced former champion, desperate to redeem himself. The Jamaicans set up to become worthy of the Olympic selection and go out for glory. That was my worst version of this. It's all but right. that's my, it was my it's favorite one. we're doing it at noon. We're, we're pre-recording this because we have another uh, really meeting. Is, that, that's that's like why. But, um, it's a little bit of background on this. This is a real story. It's based on a real story. Um, obviously, the characters who are portrayed are, the, are real, but the people portraying them are not the original characters. The original people. Um, this takes place in the 1988 Calgary Olympics, um, and it, like Spencer said, it was, it's from 1993, which is when he was three years old. It depends on when it came out, because I could be two. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was getting ready to go to high school. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> that's pretty true. Middle school. I was getting ready to go to middle school. There we go. It's like, no, you're not that much older than me. But 1993, it was a good year. I was giving full paragraphs, had no memories yet because, you know, I wasn't able to develop those besides speech. Um, you know, it was, it was great watching this this movie again. Um, I, I think we've picked a lot of nostalgia and I used to watch this movie at least once a year. Um it's been a couple of years since, but all through college, I, I have it on DVD. I know that. Mm -hmm. um, so this is not a movie that I'm like, oh, yeah, it was cool to see again. I love the characters. Love this movie. Um, it had a lot of unique Disney qualities. Um, <laughs> again, the... It, with the guys, what you should understand, <laughs> mid-90s Disney is vastly different from the stuff coming out of Disney now. Okay. Yep. This was billed as a Disney family movie. Okay, and yes, Disney runs Marvel, Disney run, you know, Star Wars. That They have all those franchises now. This is fledgling movie Disney, okay? Yeah. This is when things were just starting to heat up for them. They were, you know, they were coming up with all these cool stories. They were doing a lot of Disney TV movies and things like that. Yep. And there is language in this family movie that would never be uttered in a family movie today yep. from Disney. And it's not to where it's inappropriate words. It's those. No, no. Quick, it's just it's just know, more words. adult than you think Disney should be. Yeah, but that's, that's also what Disney Disney's known for. They're quick. Hey, I know the parents are watching. Here's a nudge, nudge, wink, wink joke. Mm -hmm. You know that's that's what they they've always been known for because it just keeps the parents awake, and it'll be like, Mom, what does hooker mean? And then there we go into Parenting 101. So uh, it's it's a it's a great movie. Again, where you start off with are these Jamaicans who are running to be track athletes in yep. the Olympics. And after just some fortunate events, which 
you know, I just wonder if he does it on purpose. I can't, you know, I'm still, I'm still unsure what happens, of it. What happens in the movie is it, it follows, it follows the career path of a man named Doris. Now, Doris has aspirations to be an Olympian, just like his father. Um, he wants to run track, and there is an unfortunate event that happens during the track qualifying meet, and Doris is trip. You know, Doris is unable to qualify for the Summer Olympics. Not happy with that, he decides that he is going to get to the Olympics any way he can. He's going to follow his dream, and he discovers bobsledding, which which requires a good, fast push start. And he thinks that if he can get some of the best sprinters in Jamaica to be on his team, they have a good shot of not only qualifying, but of competing with the world's best. And that's where John Candy comes in, because John Candy is an Olympic gold medal bobsledder. And okay. No, he, John Candy plays an Olympic no, gold medal. No, he is. He's John still Candy amazing. himself could probably never, probably not, never could have done that. Yeah. Folks, I think there's a chance. If you're unfamiliar with who John Candy is, John Candy was one of the best actors in Hollywood starting from the late 70s to the mid 90s. He unfortunately passed around then. Um, actually, it was during his, during his uh, filming his last movie that he was filming with Matthew Perry um, that he passed. Um, I actually have a copy of that at my house, so maybe we can uh, maybe we can do that one for a uh, movie matinee. Oh, um, gosh. I think I ever want to watch a Matthew Perry movie. No. This one wasn't bad. This one was not bad. And there, uh, there are actually quite a few, quite a few good ones. Uh, yeah. But getting back to it, John Candy is one of those actors in Hollywood that he was like, he was like the really quintessential dad. Um, mm -hmm. not, he wasn't like the doofy dad all the time. Like he or, was, he was the guy you wanted to be your dad. Um, yeah. Like seriously, he was he was funny without being too over the top, or you know, without pushing that envelope of in of being inappropriate. He just mm -hmm. just wasn't who he was. He made cameos in, in movies like um, Home Alone. He he was in that for about five minutes. Um, he did a, he has he has a great one with Steve Martin called Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Um, yep. So the just a very very funny man and. If you've ever had the good fortune of seeing any of his movies, I, I would highly recommend looking up the rest of his library. If you're looking at, if you're looking at getting into those, give us an email and we'll send you some stuff that you should watch. My favorite by far is Spaceballs. That is, that's when <laughs> we you should do it. Spaceballs. That'd be so I great. Think, I think we can uh, definitely do that. Let's add it to the. Uh, let's add it to our list of maybes. Um, Spaceballs. That is list is just ever growing. Just real quick, Spaceballs is a spoof on Star Wars done by Mel Brooks, and it was done in the late 80s, and it's hysterical. It is perfect. It's such a, again, 1987. I was three years unborn, and it's still one of my favorite movies. Yeah, I was, I was four. It was awesome. See? That was a good time. That was a good year. Good year, nineteen eight. Very good vintage. Do you know? Um, all right, little, little bit of little. We're getting off topic, but a little bit of trivia here. Bill Pullman, who plays Lone Star in um, yeah in that, he actually I I in the in the oh man about ten years ago I worked at a camp in the Finger Lakes in New York, and a friend of mine invited me to go to her her place with a whole bunch of other friends and have have a fire right. And she said, oh, some of my dad's friends are coming over. And I couldn't go. I had another thing happening that I just couldn't go. And I really wanted to go, but I couldn't. Dude, Bill Pullman showed up to that fire. <laughs> they had, like, this whole big, big long barbecue thing. He showed up. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Dude, they're sending me pictures. And I'm like, why? I was The, this the close. original FOMO. This close. But that's all right. The original FOMO on that. So what's your favorite part of this movie? For Cool Runnings, it's favorite hard to decide. Scene. It's yeah, let's go hard, with favorite like, hard to scene. Decide. There are so many good ones. I mean, the bar fight is great. Um, yeah. Just because of the way that, you know, it gets started. It gets started like any other quintessential movie movie bar fight. Hey, don't push my friend around. You know, like, like that kind of thing. They're yeah. getting bottles smashed over their head. But the best part of that one, I think, is Sanka. The uh, the brake man who who is the best push cart driver in Jamaica just he sees what's happening to his friends and this guy is not a fighter he is not he's he's like the kind of doofy you know comedic guy whatever he just goes 
he, he's dancing with a girl. He goes, excuse me, miss. And he jumps over the bar and in, into the fray. And you you know that he has absolutely no idea what he's doing. He's just helping. You just best. yell yippee ki That's yep. all you got to do. Like, <laughs> yell yippee ki and you're good to go. Yeah, that one's uh, good. Um, there are so many. Oh, wow. It's hard to choose. What, 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 how about you? I really like the ice cream truck scene where he's like, I'll tell you once, I'll tell you again. Cold weather training is essential. And then they open up the ice cream <laughs> truck and it's Sanka and he's shivering and you see he just has this frost on him and he breaks one of his dreads off and he just stares at it. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it feels. So get used to it. The other part is the, um, gosh, what part would it be? Oh, uh, it, w- it would probably be when he's making the plantains in the or the bananas on the hot plate. Yep. And the guy's like, "What are you doing? It's so stupid. Like, you you guys have no dreams." And then he's like, "I'm gonna move here." And he shows a photo of Buckingham Palace. Oh yeah. And for a moment, you just they're all laughing, and then. Somehow you start feeling sad for the guy because he doesn't know that it's, you know, Buckingham Palace and what it means and, and all that kind of stuff. So you're like, it's hilarious, but then it, it grabs your heart, you know, just a little bit right there. The whole so. movie does that. Like, it's very good at balancing that comedic timing with yeah. that inspirational feeling, you know, because after that happens, they they realize that he he's a little bit bummed out and, you know, his dream is a little bit shattered there, and they're like, "Look, man, don't don't stop. Keep you know, yep. you might you might not get exactly there, but you're going to get really far." Yep. You know, and the entire movie is just one huge inspirational, you know, yeah. message. You know, of, well, uh, it's, it's that same part of trying to get out of the small town. You know, mm-hmm. they Jamaica's the the small island, but all four have something to prove. They're there are four different characters who are all going towards the same dream. One's trying to follow his father's steps and become an Olympic runner. One just wants to get off the island. One's asked by his best friend to just join him in his adventure. And then one's a wealthy kid who doesn't want to follow in his dad's footsteps of just being a lawyer and going to law school or working in business. And he wants to go to towards his own path. So... I like that that character, uh, you know, mix that they have. They're not all the same, you know, so I like that. One of the things I love about this movie is that time and time again, obstacles just keep getting thrown in their way. Yeah. They, you know, they get told <laughs> Jamaica doesn't compete in the Winter Olympics. They overcome yep. that. They don't have the money. They don't have the money to do it, so they raise the money. You know, yep. all of the Olympians there, especially – now, remember, this is the 1988 Olympics, so um, – East and West Germany were still two different countries back then. Yeah. The East German team is like, like picking on them as much as they can. Like, oh, what's up, Jamaica? You and know, then Switzerland. That, yeah. Uh, you know, and just kind of giving them as much trouble as they can. The Olympic Committee does everything they can to get rid of Jamaica out of the Winter Olympics because they feel like they're going to be an embarrassment. Their own yeah. coach gives up on them at some at one point, and then and then yeah. comes back. You know, like every single obstacle they that gets thrown in their way, these guys find a way to overcome, and they yep. do it. They don't do it in that quintessential feel-good movie thing where they're like, "All right, guys, next thing, let's go." No, you get exactly. to see them, you know, have that little bit of depression. You get to see them be human. It's amazing, and and I just I love that. Toward the end of the movie, the way the movie ends is a huge, huge shock. If you've never, it's accurate to what actually happened, but. Um, yeah. It's a huge shock if you don't know what happens. Don't they, I will, don't I will they use that. real footage? I don't think they used real footage I, on it just because of the way that um, the way that the cameras work and stuff back then. Like the news, like news footage and Hollywood cameras, cameras were two completely different things. Okay, back then. see, I I um, swore I, I do them believe that they recreated well. some of the shots from the footage though. Okay. Um, and I believe, and I, if I'm, if I'm wrong, correct me, and we might have to look right. it up. But the shots where they're actually bobsledding, I, th- I feel like they got the real Jamaican bobsledders to come back and film those. Um, I don't remember precisely how that went, because um, we are talking a movie that's, you know, twenty some odd years old. So, 
my point is, if you've not seen this movie, um, it is it is it's what on Netflix is on is it on Netflix or, or Hulu? No, this one is on Disney Plus. Oh, Disney Plus, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so it is on Disney Plus. If you have the ability to to get it, you can get highlights and individual scenes on YouTube. Um, just type in Cool Runnings, and you're going to get a whole list of things that you can watch that that will give you a little bit of update on on the on the movie. Yep. Yeah. So they said they used some actual footage that led to it. I don't know if they used the crash, but they used some of the actual footage, um, which led to it. But that's the great part about technology now, is that you can just look things up. You don't have to be like, you know what, let me go to the library later, which libraries are very important. Keep Actually, studying, use them. Great I wanted, resource. I wanted to point that out. You can. This movie is dated, and you can tell because right in the beginning, when Doris wants to is trying to convince Sokka to become a bobsledder, he knocks the wheels off of his push cart, and yep. then he says, "That's a bobsled." And Sokka goes, "Okay, so it's just a push cart with no wheels." And then Doris opens a book, and says, yep. "That's what it says here." And instead of pulling out his phone, like he's he's like. That's what it says here. And I couldn't Because they didn't have it. cell phones. No, cell phones were not a thing back then. Yeah. So, you remember what when the buddies meet and they're walking by, they're like, hey, you know that restaurant up there? Meet me in 30 minutes. Yep. Nowadays, it'd be like, hey, I'll text you where to meet me. See you, see you in 30 minutes. Maybe like 30, 35. And then it'd be five minutes of them texting back and forth like, hey, sorry, running a little bit behind. I'm on my way. This is when people were worried about showing up to places on time because they didn't have the ability to delay, delay, delay. Exactly. <laughs> so I miss those times. I miss not having a cell I phone. Feel like, I feel like cell phones and technology are great, but they have killed the part of life that just you you can't have in the same way, you no. know? Yeah. Um, I had a resident but, hall. I mean, part of that for oh. me is I, I don't read on a device. I can't do it. Like, yeah. I... I I'm I'm old school enough where I, I it has to be book or paper, you know. Um, and for oh, man, I walk into a bookstore, and just the smell of books is amazing for me. I love yep. old bookstores. Um, I said it once. My kids, I'll say it again. My kids, they're I like, prefer- "Can I read this on my tablet?" I'm like, "No, you're gonna read a book." <laughs> so books don't require batteries. <laughs> so. No, that's true. The use of energy on that. But again, I'll say it once. I'll say it again. I prefer my coloring books on a piece of paper than on a tablet. So I'm here with you. You know, we got this. It is it, perfect. I want to. I want to put that sucker. I want to be able to put that sucker right on my fridge and let you know my housemates know. Like, look, I drew this in the lines. It's great. Look at this artwork. Yes, I did not draw it alone, but I did color it. My bad. Um, but it was, again, it, I enjoyed that side of technology. But again, with this movie, I enjoyed it. You know, what else can you say about it? It's a, it's a fun movie. You don't have to, you don't have to pay too attention to it 24-7. Um, it's a great movie to put on while cleaning, put on while relaxing. You know, it, it has a, a pretty good story to follow. Um, and, and overall, I, uh, I always find myself having to get past the the sadness of the first like five seven minutes when they don't qualify for the Olympics. I'm like, that's just really sad to to have that happen. Um, but then the rest of the movie, it's great, you know, trying to practice and and running into the the the, the car after their first time they they made it, and he's like, well, let's go back up the hill. We're doing it again, and everyone's like, all right. So it's a, I, I enjoyed that side of the movie. Um, you got any final thoughts? It's a, it's a pretty easy movie to talk about. Um, you know, it's, it's not every movie has to be like, so what did you see here? And what was this? It's like, yeah. was this funny? Yes or no? Uh-huh. Like, okay, like, good. Like I said, uh, this is, this is quintessential mid nineties, uh, Disney, um, which is meant to be family oriented and just, one of those inspirational feel-good movies that they were coming out with at the time. Um, it's on Disney+. Plus. If you have any thoughts or anything you want to talk about, please give us an yep. email, and we'd be happy to discuss whatever you want. What would you rank this movie? <sighs> this is one of my favorite movies growing up. When I go back and look at it from an adult standpoint, I'd say somewhere between... It's got to be like a 7.5 to an 8. 
Um, I give it like a seven to a seven and a half. So yeah. I think we're on that. Let's, that let's go with seven. Time. Let's go with like seven and a half, seven point four, okay. seven point five, somewhere around there. We'll I like it. that. It's cool beans. I'll I'll it gets, take it. It does get a full extra point though because John Candy's in it. So true. That is <laughs> John Candy would be in the six. It would be in the mid six range. But yeah. you know, that's fine. What movie do you want to watch for next week, Daryl? Oh, let me take the list. There's so okay, many. So we've got about. Um, sorry, I write small, so I can't actually show you the list that I have here, but, uh, what about Uncut Gems? We haven't seen that yet, have we? Uh, we have not seen it. I've never seen that movie. It just got added onto Netflix, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, again, these streaming services are getting movies out a lot quicker than they used to. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm down for Uncut Gems. It's about, it has Adam Sandler leading in a serious role. Uh, it has drama, it has sports, um, but it's not only a sport, Which, it's not a sports movie. And let's um, be totally honest here, Adam Sandler in a serious role, I always thought those were better than his comedic roles. Uh, he's just, some, something about him in, in that type of role, he's, he just pulls it off. Unless it's Grown Ups. I did love Grown Ups. That was a good one. I haven't seen that. Oh, it's a good one. Watch it. It, it makes well, I am laugh. a big Chris Rock fan, so Chris Rock's in it, right? Yeah, that that's the part that I that's that was one of those when they added Chris Rock to it. You're like, okay, this is a I do. This isn't I just that really Adam like Sandler and his buddies movie. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, it's, it's him and Kevin James and Chris Rock. Nope. And, uh, uh, no. What's his face? David Spade. That, yeah. Sorry. Wait. I no. Is it David Spade? Is it David Spade? I don't know. I've never seen it. You've seen it. I, gosh, I don't. It's all it's all the old SNL guys, you know. Oh, I think it is. Yeah. Um, Pretty much, that's all they ever do. One of my one of my favorite jokes from Brooklyn Nine Nine is when they're doing the auction and, and Adam Sandler's there and he's like, "I do serious movies. I'm writing one about the Russian Revolution," and Andy Sandberg's like, "Yeah, who's Kevin James play?" <laughs> <laughs> it's Rob Snyder. Rob Snyder and oh, yeah. and David Spade. That's oh, right. So they're. Yeah, it has all of them. But Selma Hayek's in it, so it just makes the overall oh, movie okay. good. I can't believe Rotten Tomatoes only gives it a 10%. It hey, you know what movie? Speaking of Selma Hayek, you know what movie we should do sometime is Desperado. I was going to say Dogma. <laughs> we can do Dogma. No, that would be a good one. But oh, Rotten okay. Tomatoes I'm at, hang on, I'm adding that to the list. Yeah. Rotten Tomatoes, the Tomator from the... From the critics, gave it only a ten percent. The audience is a sixty-two. They don't. The critics don't know better, and that's the part I about never, these films. I never ever go by what the critics say. I, you you I can't. can't, unless it's um, Aquaman. Then they're right. It's I just, true. I just finished yeah. watching Space Force, and you know, critics panned it like crazy. They're like, "Oh, this is awful." Well, that's because they're all trying to compare it to The Office. Yeah. You know, it's 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 Greg Daniels and Steve Carell from The Office have created Space Force, and when you realize that they're trying, to, they're actively trying for it to not become a facsimile of the of The Office, you realize well, that it's actually a really smart, really good show. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty good one. Well, so, well, I enjoyed talking with you again, Daryl. Yeah. Let's uh, let's do it again. I, I I'm down to to talk. Uh, how about our, how about at our meet, at our meeting in a hundred in an hour and twenty minutes. That was like 120 minutes. Whoa, I was gonna say like, I was gonna say hours? 120. I'm like, nope, that's two hours. Yeah. Nope, that'd be 80. <laughs> 80 minutes. So yes, I will. I'll see you. In, I'll see you in my 80 minutes with the rest. I'll of I'll see you in 80 minutes, but I will see the rest of you on Monday matinee next Monday. The what is it? 15th at noon. We will be doing Uncut Gems on Netflix. It'll be really good. So. Everybody see all of our other videos on YouTube. Follow us on social media. We are here. Bye, guys. Bye.